if your thumbnails suck, no one's going to watch your video. All that hard work of you coming up with the idea, shooting the video, editing the video, staying up all night is for nothing. You've even tried copying your favorite YouTuber's thumbnails only to see your videos flop hard. So what's their secret? How can you two create a clickable thumbnail, even if you're artistically challenged like me and not really good with Photoshop? So I've spent 200 plus hours studying the best YouTube thumbnails out there and even paid for a thumbnail expert to give me some feedback on mine. After all this, I realized a pattern and a formula that you can use to create clickable thumbnails. So at the end of this video, you'll understand the thumbnail ideology so your videos get the clicks and views that it deserves. So let's go over the four principles of a good YouTube thumbnail. So principle number one, do the thumbnail before the video. So most big YouTubers agree on this from Mr. Beast, April Lin, and Ed from Film Booth. Here's Mr. Beast's logic. Essentially, your title and thumbnail set expectations. And at the very beginning of the video, to minimize drop off, you want to assure them that those expectations are being met. So 80% of your work on YouTube is the ideation, the thumbnail, and the scripting. This is long before you even touch the camera. So here's the work process to increase the chances of a successful YouTube video. So number one, have a banger video idea. If you don't know how to do that, watch this video right here. Number two, create the thumbnail and title combination to spark a curiosity, which is an emotion. Three, create the video script to meet or exceed the expectation raised from your thumbnail. And lastly, step number four is only then when you actually go out and shoot the video producing. So principle number two, shitty but unique thumbnails is way better compared to a cleanly edited but generic thumbnail. Okay, so this one shout out to Money Maxing. So his channel broke through the noise in one of the hardest niche ever to grow, which is growing on YouTube. So his simple thumbnail with the frog meme stood out from the crowd by being an alien in the sea of cleanly edited but generic thumbnails. So this proves a point to newbies. You don't need advanced Photoshop editing skills. As a beginner, you can use any free software like Canva that's good enough. All you need to do is look at the competition, look at what they are doing, and you do the opposite of that. Because if everybody is cleanly edited, what are the chance of your cleanly edited thumbnail will stick out? It won't, it will blend in because everybody else has the same thing, right? So the whole point is you need to be different, not to be cleanly edited. So I'll show you how to do this a little later in the video. So principle number three, design your thumbnail with mobile in mind. Now, I'm not sure how your setup at home is. Maybe you have a really nice home office with a big screen and the proper desk and everything. But chances are your potential viewer will be watching YouTube on their phone, very small screen, and they will see a very tiny version of your thumbnail. So make sure you design your thumbnail so it stands out on the YouTube sidebar or on mobile. So here's what you can do. Number one, you can eliminate as many elements as possible. Keep it really simple. Two, have good contrast, color, bright and dark. And lastly, a maximum of four words or none at all. The trend nowadays, a lot of the bigger YouTubers, they're going with less and less words on the thumbnail. A lot of them have none at all, which is pretty interesting. So once you have your thumbnail ready, here's how to test if your thumbnail looks good on YouTube before you actually shoot the video. So number one, YouTube search your keyword. In my case, let's say how to create YouTube thumbnails. Pick the best ones that are interesting to you, screenshot them and place them in a three by three grid on Miro or any whiteboard software that you have. Then you use thumbsup.tv to test your thumbnail and title together, screenshot that and put it in the middle of that grid. Now ask yourself from the competition here, is your thumbnail unique enough? Will I click on this? So principle number four, thumbnail performance. So your thumbnail can be quantifiably measured by a metric called click-through rate or CTR. So in simple English, CTR means the percentage of people who click on your thumbnail after they saw it. So a 5% CTR means out of 100 person that YouTube try to show your thumbnail, five of them click on it. So there's five people who click out of 100. So that's 5% CTR. So here's how to access your click-through rate. So go to your YouTube studio, click on content, click on any of your content right here and click on the graph icon. Then click on the reach tab right here. And here you go, impressions, click-through rate. So this particular video did really well, around 9.1%. So a good click-through rate to aim for is 10%. So if it's 5% and below, it definitely needs work. The cool thing about YouTube though, once you publish something, you can always change the thumbnail without having to re-upload the same thing. All right, so enough theory. 
theory, let's get down to business by showing you the types of thumbnail that you can do. So the first type and what you should start as a beginner is the YouTuber classic. So I have examples here for you. I have the links down there in the video description so you can have access to all of this. Okay, so the first one is Nate Black. So Nate is in the YouTube education space. Traditionally, if you were to think of a YouTube thumbnail, this is pretty much it. The formula is very simple. It has a color theme. It has a simple background. It has the face of the person really big showing some sort of emotion. And this is important because this person is trying to personal brand himself. That's why he puts his face there, which I think you should do for your channel as well. It has a very simple text, two, three words tops. And then he has an object trying to drive the point of the entire video. So very simple components. And I think for a beginner, this is the easiest you can do. So the entirety of Nate's YouTube thumbnail is shot in his home office. There's really not that much to it. So I think anybody, especially the beginner, can start off doing these types of thumbnails. Let's take a look at another one. Vanessa Lau, she is in the YouTube growth niche as well. So let's take a look at her video. Kind of similar, but she has her own branding going on. You see, it's her big face right here. Maximum three, four words. And then some sort of object to drive the point. So in this video, it's talking about Instagram Reels. So obviously it has the IG Reel icon here. So as you can see, very similar style to Nate. So the YouTuber classic is perfect for lifestyle, education, or anyone starting on YouTube. Because the pros is it's pretty easy to make. It's perfect for beginners. The cons, however, is that it has become mainstream and it's very hard to stand out because everybody can do it because it's easy. So you must bank in on your personality to spark that curiosity and get people to click. Okay, so moving on to the next one is the clean, heavy edited thumbnail. So let's take a look at some examples. Okay, so just take a look at Mr. Beast's thumbnails here. These are heavily edited. They, they look simple, but I can 100% assure you that thumbnail editor, use Photoshop, change the color, add a lot of stuff to make it look the way that it does right here. For example, this is 100% image manipulation where they can have a track that goes down into a hole like this. So they did something. I don't know how to do this. This is very high Photoshop editing skills. So the second example is Daniel Fazio. So he teaches people how to make money online and scale their agencies. So I think this guy is doing his YouTube. So if you look at his thumbnails, they're very cleanly edited, especially these types. I don't know how to warp this image to look like that. Look at these icons with the fluorescent graph at the back. That's really, really good. I can tell this is somebody who knows their way around Photoshop. So as a beginner, if you want to do this kind of stuff, there's a steep learning curve for sure. Now let's take a look at the third example, Nate Wealth. So Nate Wealth is also in the YouTube growth niche. They all super cleanly edited, but he's running a faceless channel. So if you notice, he does not put his face here, which is interesting. But in order for you to create these types of thumbnails, you definitely need a high Photoshop editing skills. I myself don't know how to edit to this level. This is crazy and they're performing very well. And the last example is Alex Hormozzi. So very similar, all cleanly edited, especially this one. Look at that. That's so nice. So he obviously hired a professional YouTube agency team to handle all this because there's no way anybody could do this themselves. It's just so cleanly edited. So if we go back, the basic elements of the clean, heavy edited thumbnails is usually high contrast. So the images really pop out. The face almost looks unreal because they increase the brightness, increase the saturation, so it pops out. So a maximum of two to three words and super cleanly edited. You need somebody with a good eye of design to do this. So a typical niche that does really well with this type of thumbnail are gamers, entertainment channels, and agency owners. The cool thing is, if you know how to grab people's attention with this type of thumbnail, I think you're pretty set. You know how to attract attention from people, period. The cons, however, you need strong Photoshop editing skills. And if you notice, all of the design after a while starts to look the same. So there's that cons of this type of thumbnails. Okay, so the third type of thumbnails that you can do is simple and cinematic. Let's look at the first example, Life of Riza. She just recently blew up to 421K and I've been following her very closely, very inspired by her growth. So this type of a thumbnail is very cinematic. And what that means is it seems very artistic, no words or very little words. In her case, she has none at all. And if you notice the type of thumbnail here, it's less overly edited like it was before. It's edited in a way that the colors look kind of muted, very cinematic. And that fits her style because she is a videographer and she's promoting her videographing services. So obviously she needs to make her stuff looks good cinematic or else like she wouldn't get clients, right? So I just want to let you know that there's a lot of thought that goes into the seemingly simple 
thumbnail especially this one for example so she wants to see how do i organize my life simple notion workflow so obviously it needs to be some sort of computer there because notion is like a computer software but she sits in front of this window but somehow her face is still lit so i'm pretty sure on the back end behind the scenes there's some sort of special lighting to make her face illuminated enough so you can see her face so all this small, small stuff she has to think about. So I think there's a lot more thought that goes into this. Uh, so this example right here as well, she took a picture of herself while she sat next to this window that gives her that nice cinematic lighting with the drop shadow. All this is carefully thought out. So can a beginner do this? Depends. Some of you are very artistic and this will just feels very natural to you. Well, some of you who are artistically challenged, this might be like impossible to do. So this depends. Are you the artistic type? Then this might suit you very well. Let's take a look at the next example, Lynette Atkins. Okay, so one of the videos here showed up on my homepage a year back. The secret to content creation I wish I knew sooner. As a content creator, obviously this resonated with me and I want to know, oh, what is that secret? So Lynette's thumbnail is a lot less cinematic than Riza, but I would bucket them in the same category. So if you look here, she has maximum one, two words, not much, big picture of herself. And she has a really nice backdrop here where she shoots her videos. So she puts in a lot of these plans. I think it resonates with the audience, which is typically young girls. I think these thumbnails do really, really well. Really strong personal brand on her case. And I don't think this is super hard to do, but you definitely need to be a little bit more creative to, to pull this off. Okay, third example, Matt Diavella. I'm pretty sure a lot of you know this guy. It's very simple and minimalist. So Matt's whole identity is about minimalism and having a minimalist YouTube thumbnail just makes a lot of sense. Now, these are not super hard to do, but it does require a lot of thought to know what should the thumbnail be to represent the video idea. And last example is yes theory. So very simple, very highly edited, a lot of contrast. So this definitely requires a lot of artistic Photoshop editing skills for sure. But you can see the big boys, they're moving away from having text. You see the pattern, right? Okay, so what type of people are suitable for doing these simple, clean, cinematic thumbnails? It's for artistic characters, artistic channels. If you are a travel vlogger, if you are a videographer or thumbnail designer, obviously you want to make these kind of thumbnails to promote yourself. So the pros is that if you know what you're doing, it's really not that much effort where you have to bank in a lot on your personal branding and photography skills to get that click. The cons, however, it may be really hard for some people who are artistically challenged. But for some of you, if you are naturally artistic, this could be like second nature to you. All right, so this is the last type of thumbnails that you can do. It's called raw and unique. So a perfect challenge that does this is by someone called Money Maxing. So the thumbnail looks very crudely put together, but somehow they work. See, this guy's getting views a lot. So the reason why this works is that when everybody is doing the cleanly edited thumbnail, after a while, they all look the same. Now, all of a sudden, you have this guy with a picture of a meme frog that just stood out. It was so different than everybody else that it caught people's attention. So the type of niche that does really well here is pretty much everybody who are in a super competitive niche. For example, gaming, YouTube growth. So if you see everybody else doing one thing, the same thing, you do the exact opposite. And that's what Money Maxing is doing in his channel right here. So the pros is it's proof that you don't need super good Photoshop editing skills to make a good clickable thumbnail. All you have to do is figure out how to be unique. So the cons, however, it may look very simple and crude, but there's a lot of thought that goes into the design of these types of thumbnails. Because I can guarantee you, if you copy his thumbnails exactly, it may not work for you. But the whole point of this is that it's different and that's why it's working. So you need to find your unique different way. Okay, so now you know the four types of thumbnails that you can possibly do, especially when you're starting out. One of these will resonate with you very well. Like you can visualize yourself in one of these thumbnails already. Like which one is it? Leave a comment and let me know which one and why. So I'm going to share with you one of my clients. Her name is Molly. So she's a sales funnel expert. She helped business owners automate their online sales through landing pages and also email copywriting. So I helped her set up her channel from scratch and helped her with her first few videos. So this is her channel. So if you can see here, she has a theme color going on, which is black and yellow. Now, usually you have a very simple bland background. In my case, it's kind of like a muted yellow where the text is black. And I asked her to take a few photos of herself doing some goofy faces. And then I pick the one that I think is relevant to the context here. And the other thing is I have an object 
that closely resonates with the whole idea of the video, which is getting your emails open. So it's an icon of an email already open and somebody clicking on it. And then the text there, instead of saying how to get your email open or whatever, I just had opened. So very short and sweet. And I think this thumbnail did really well. So if you look at the analytics here, we click on this graph. This video got 9.1% click through rate. Pretty good. Great. Now you know how to create thumbnails that gets your videos the clicks and views it deserves. So the next thing you got to figure out is how to make a killer YouTube intro. And if you want to know how to do that, watch this video right here.